for over 50 years. Kirby Morgan has revolutionized commercial diving. From masks to helmets and everything in between. Dive into history with us as we step into the Dive Locker. Kirby Morgan, KMAM4. This was the first mask Kirby and Morgan built as partners. These were a simple steady flow mask for commercial divers. Nine were made. Kirby recalls that the KMAM4 was their first mask together. He had just finished building the four helium recirculators for Murray Black. Shortly after Bev created the MM3 mask for Danny Wilson, Kirby and Bev decided to collaborate on these masks while simultaneously working on the next batch of recirculators. Bev played a significant role in the project, designing the mold and overseeing the entire endeavor. While Bev handled the fiberglass work, Kirby focused on the metal aspects. However, this particular mask had an unsettling story attached to it, resulting in a traumatic experience. Morgan remembers that when they had just started their partnership, Kirby had a vision for a small free-flow mask, a scaled-down version of the initial MM1. Morgan expressed doubts about its marketability, emphasizing the importance of incorporating a regulator and communication capabilities. Demand masks allowed divers to hold their breath and hear communications, while free-flow masks posed challenges in this regard. Nevertheless, Kirby's determination led them to create this mask, albeit in limited quantities. This marked the beginning of their journey towards developing the band mask. Kirby recounts a harrowing incident involving a diver named Walt Swanson, who used one of their masks. During his dive at the Channel Islands, Walt's air supply abruptly stopped, causing his face to almost be sucked into the air hose. To escape this dire situation, he resorted to smashing the faceplate with his abalone iron, relieving the pressure and ascending along his hose. Upon reaching the surface, it became evident that both his eyeballs had popped out from their sockets and were resting on his cheeks. His tender intervened, covering his face with wet gunny sacks to preserve his eyeball's moisture, and they headed back to the harbor. A doctor managed to pop back in the eyeballs using his thumbs, offering limited assistance. Walt, known as a fighter, visited their shop and seemed intent on confronting Bev, potentially leading to a confrontation. Morgan recalls the incident when a car pulled up outside their workshop. A woman assisted a man with large patches over both eyes to the entrance. The man's face was severely bruised, with bloody eye sockets and burst veins, resembling something out of a horror movie. The group inside the shop was shocked by his appearance and the woman's enraged accusations that their mask design had nearly killed her husband. Although the man initially sought a fight, Morgan convinced him to examine the mask first. Taking the mask, Morgan inspected it, starting with the one-way valve. Morgan discovered that the man had a new operator who failed to fix his air hose correctly and didn't clear it after the first cutoff. A strand of fabric and rubber from the hose had obstructed the one-way valve, causing the near-disastrous face squeeze during the second cutoff. The man and his wife examined the evidence, confirming it wasn't their fault. Despite the relief, the man's horrifying facial injuries spurred Morgan to develop an improved one-way valve for future masks. This concludes this episode of the Diving into the Kirby Morgan Archives. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Dive Locker.